Hallo Satya, welcome Hello, to Devasi. interview for Jetzt TV. Hello. Hello. <laughs> um, who gave you the name Satya and what does this name mean for you? Satya, I got the name in Pune from uh, Osho. He was still alive at this time. I mean, I didn't meet him personally, but I got I took sannyas there. And uh, Satya means uh, truth. Gyan Satya, wisdom and truth, or truthful wisdom. <laughs> and um, for me, when I took sannyas, it was um, breaking out, break, uh, let's say, Uh, finishing with the old, a new start, a new life, a spiritual life, and I also fell in love with Osho, so there was really no doubt about it. I just jumped in the river, and um, yeah, since then I love this name, I have it. And when I met Papaji later, he, he always liked this name, he always told me Satya is Satya, and it was never an idea of changing it. Or when, when did it happen? When did you first get to Osho, to Pune? In uh, 89, in 1989, I was just just turned 21 years old. And it just happened. I didn't have, I didn't know about gurus, I didn't know about anything. I just was to studying art. But it took me by surprise. I met some sannyasin, and and I felt suddenly my whole life switched. From I started to read books of Osho, and there was suddenly an aliveness and a fire that was bigger than me, and I just had to go with it. I I felt suddenly my life has a sense. It felt like I had been asleep all these years before. Like if I was not really living. <laughs> so when I met Osho, it was like it felt like reconnecting with something really old that I already knew, but I had lost contact with it. And um, yeah. So this was the first time you went to India. How was yes. it to, for you to be in India? Oh, I loved it immediately. I, it was. I just went for a month. I was still studying and. The sannyasin we had met told us maybe you should not wait too long to come and see Osho because there were rumors that he was not well and so I went there with my mother. She also had the same call for it. So we both went there and for me it was immediate. I oh I loved the aliveness, the colors, the I fell at home. Yeah. And when I, after one month I had to go back, I used to live in Geneva. And it was so hard for me to go back. It was, I was, yeah, for me it was time to be more in India. And going back, I remember I was in a taxi and there was so much no noise in Switzerland that you could hear the, you know, the car, the, how you call this, um, I don't know in English. You know when it's raining and the ah, car is yes, uh -huh. so the white car. So. Yeah, one heard only that, you know, and I was like, oh, it's not possible. <laughs> and your mother, she took also sannyas. Yes, she also. Wow. Actually, we took sannyas the same day. Uh -huh. After two weeks, we were there. So you're really a Jan sannyas family. Yes. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. It, it just happened. It was stronger than us, you can say. It was... You met Pari already there? No, I no. didn't meet Pari there. I met him in Lucknow. Maybe I saw him, you know, because he was also in those days in Pune, so... Mm -hmm. How came that you went to Pune, to Lucknow then, from Pune? I... you know, when Osho died, I... I felt first a big loss because I was actually just maybe a year in Pune before he died. I had the chance, I had the luck to be there for eight months in a stretch and see him every day before he died. But when he died, at first it was like, ah, oh, it's not possible. I just came and <laughs> now he goes, you know. Um, 
and and then I got over it. I mean, still being in Pune was wonderful, and uh, there was so much to do and experience. And as a young person, it was such a great luck to have all these groups experience. And so then I stayed. But later, maybe two years later, or one year later, I forget now. Um, some people started to talk about Papaji, and at first I was not interested. I but uh, there was a one day I was in Geneva and I heard from three people the same day about it, you know, like a phone call, a postcard. So I thought, hmm, this is a bit strange. The same day, three friends from different parts of the world tell me about this man. There must be something there. And then I went back to Pune and uh, people started, many sannyasin went to Papaji in those days. There was a constant flow of people going there. And um, I had very good friends going there. And then one day, someone told me they show a video of him in the ashram, actually in a room in the ashram from someone who used to live there. The room was full, and I couldn't really understand what he said because it was a small TV. But I thought to myself, am I really happy? Am I really contented? And I couldn't really say yes in that moment. And I felt, well, maybe this man can help me. And then another incident happened that a woman was working in looking at some archives from Osho and she had found some sentences of Osho saying, if you're not finished with your work when I'm not here, just go ahead, go on, meet as many enlightened masters as you wish, just go on. And this struck me, you know, it was like... It was simply the moment, you know, so I, I went to Punjaji, but I thought I'd just stay a week. I didn't even stay, take my passport with me, and, uh, but I stayed in six weeks. And uh, when I told him, you have a, when I was leaving again, because I had a flat in Pune and everything, he told me, come back soon. So <laughs> That was his advice, and uh, yeah, and then it took me a while, you know, I went back and forth between Pune and Lucknow, but then it was clear that a life master is in Lucknow, you know, and so there was such a chance to be so close to this man, you know, which was not really the case with Osho, physically we could not be so close to Osho, so this was such a great luck. And I always felt being in Lucknow, it's not even my choice, I'm just there. I didn't even decide, it's, it happened. Did you like the place? No. <laughs> no, this was quite tough at first, yeah, because Pune was very green and there was good food by that time in 1991. So at first the circumstances in Lucknow were really difficult, but there was a fire, um, a true master, which made it that we, we went over it, you know, the pollution was unbearable, we were always black, we got sick, we got everything. There were pigs on the street. Exactly, pigs on the street. The pollution was very hard. Mm -hmm. And there was not even a cafe to go th to, or, you know. I remember that sometime we went to restaurant in town and then you had the cockroach, you know, in the basket where they brought the bread, you know. <laughs> so it was, it was intense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But then Papaji uh, wanted that there is a restaurant in the satsang house, so after that it was a bit easier. There was daily meal there, which, you know, but sure, it was, it was intense. <laughs> yeah, and the people were very nice together, I remember. It was like, it was like a big family. Mm -hmm. Papaji taught the people to be friends to mm -hmm. each other, to be friendly and to help each other. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, we, used, we started to have flats, you know, the moment we had our own flats, it, it was easier. Then you have your own clean water, you can cook, then it's easier for the body. And there you met Pari? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was there already... Oh, till we got together, I think I, I lived there three years. 
before we got together. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> How is now, you, who is your master? Is it old school or is it Papaji or is there no difference? You know, when I met Papaji, I felt it's the same energy when I'm so... Same energy like Osho, it didn't feel like there's a difference. It's simply another um, expression. Papaji was very different <laughs> from his personality to Osho. And, but at first the, the vibration, the energy was the same. I felt, ah, oh, it's the same, you know. But of course I had so much more contact to Papaji, you know, that uh, I can relate more to Papaji. It's, uh, I feel both, I feel both, I, I felt uh, Osho sent me to Papaji, like, I remember when I went back for the second time to Lucknow, I was looking at a picture of Osho and he told me, I had an insight, suddenly, oh, I'm sending you to Papaji, and I, that's what I, it was very beautiful to feel that, I felt there was no contradiction. And when I met Papaji again, he invited me to his house and, and he told me, your master, your previous master sent you to me. And it was amazing because that was exactly the insight I had. And so I felt it's just, they are just together, you know, there's no, there's no need to feel against one or more for one. Or, but of course I had more contact with Papaji, so I feel more connected in a way, mm. yes, for sure. What does it mean, a master, to have a master, having a master for you? What, what is the sense of it? What is the sense of having a master? It's... Um, to find peace within oneself. To, it's, it's like, you know, people are afraid of gurus in our societies, but it's... It's a reflection, it's a never-ending reflection of who you are and um, he helped me to to trust myself more, to, to love myself more, you know, he was very human and um, unconditional love, a master is unconditional love, so if you're in your mind he's going to show it to you or if you are, it's a mirror, you know, and as long as you are not feeling good, uh, then you need this mirror to always reflect on you, reflect on you, till you trust yourself, till you, um, till you are on your own feet. I believe that a master at one point you need to, to, to live your own life and not to stay. As long as you need him, it's totally okay to, to be around him. And What is the difference when the master is in the body and when the master is dead already? Well, you're always confronted when the master is in the body. You never know. I mean, with Papaji, I never knew how he's going to react. It was always unpredictable. And, um, yeah, you're always confronted to yourself, you know. Mm -hmm. Can, Papaji could be tough also, he could be screaming at you or... Anything it was possible. <laughs> but if you trust the master, you, you know that it's for your own good. You don't have a doubt. It's about surrender. It's about not... If you cannot trust the master and you, don't, you doubt him, then better do something else or go somewhere else. It's... Uh, I felt at one point, I was always worried with money, with this and that. And I had an insight one day, oh, I give it to him. Just take care of it, you know, I don't want to be busy with it anymore. And from then on, a feeling of trust, I felt it really takes care of me. I didn't fear anymore, I didn't, it's, things started to change from, my, from this moment. And it's still going on? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you started to sing then, there in Lucknow? Yeah. I, I sang already in Pune. And, uh, but of course, singing for Papaji, looking in his eyes, this was an incredible experience. I had to sing, I had to show my love to him. I felt so much overwhelming love 
from him, you know, and it just happened that more and more people started to sing and, and I was one of those and it was a chance also to get his attention, to have a moment of Mm-hmm. of being with him. It was lovely and singing for him, Not actually at first I couldn't even sing for him. I was so... I used to sing, I could sing in front of people, perform, you know, but the first time I had to sing for him it was like I was... <laughs> I could not, it, because it was such a different dimension, another level. Uh, you know, you could suddenly talk when you sing, or it was a challenge. But you get got used to it? I got used to it and I got to trust myself more and, you know, sometimes he was testing, at the end I realized he tests all the time, you know, and I think one of the last time, the last year I didn't feel to sing so much for him, I don't know, it was just like that, I felt more quiet and more... It was simply not happening and once I just... Many people at the end, there was a lot of singing because he was old the last year. And once I... Many went, used to just go to him and I, don't know, I just went to him and I... He looked at me like, what is she doing here, you know? But I, I had so much trust in myself in that moment that I didn't matter. And I sang my song, I saw he's testing me now. <laughs> And I sang and it was beautiful. Mm -hmm. Music is a big part of your spiritual path. Was there ever a time on your path where music was not a part of it at all? Or did those two always belong together somehow? When I first went to uh, Puna, I went more into dance actually, there was, uh, I discovered a new way to dance, you know, this free expression and I would say dance was more uh, my thing in that moment. And it felt also breaking, I used to do more with photography, cinema and also music maybe and I didn't feel the need to have an instrument anymore. Actually all these years in India I didn't have an instrument. Um, yeah, it, it came and went, but I would say it got more in, in luck now. The music mm -hmm. got, came back stronger. But you know, music, dance, they are interconnected, so now you can't really <laughs> disconnect them. So yes, I would say yes, music was always. The yoga you offer now with mm -hmm. movement and music mm -hmm. and dancing, is mm -hmm. this your own creation? Well, you know, it's difficult to say it's your own creation. I think everybody takes a little bit from everything. I wouldn't say it's your own creation. It's simply, I'm a temperament, I'm a bit kapha type in Ayurveda and I need to move, you know, and so I, I took a bit from here and there, just for myself actually, to find a... Um, a way to keep my body fit and uh, getting older when I feel I need to do a bit more, you know. In old days one could just... <laughs> in the Lucknow years we were more lazy, also the pollution was such that even to dance or to do yoga you felt even worse afterwards because you just breathe in this pollution, you know. We actually all these years in Lucknow I kind of was not so much into doing uh, for the body and so after that I felt oh I need again to get into it and so I did it for myself to find a, a routine that fits my temperament and and since I love dance I combine things I mean I also teach a bit dance from the years in Pune I did really a lot of dance in Pune I was really into dance so now it comes back so I find you know I love some different yoga, like Kundalini yoga I like very much and it's also more gentle yoga, so I combine. When you are singing in a concert, mm -hmm. is this a special moment of meditation or is this like every moment else? It's special. 
it's um, it's ecstatic. Yeah. You feel the people around. Yeah. Then. Yeah. The challenge is to you know to still stay oneself and go on whatever the. Sometimes people are are not used to mantras or. It's maybe not their thing, although now it's a bit more common. But it's yeah, to st what I do it is to, to to go on and s stay with, stay quiet, you know, stay within whatever the circumstances. You plan before what kind of songs you think or which? No, we do it more or less in the moment, you know. Mm. Of course, we have some favorite songs or some songs we know. They, they, people respond very well to them. Some, it's, some songs, it depends of the crowd. You, know, you never know. Some are more safe. But, yeah, we, we do it pretty much in the moment. And is this situation very different from the situation when you are, for example, in a studio to record a song? Sure, yeah. It's, <laughs> it's much more, how to say, you know, first of all in a studio you have, you, your time is divided, you know, you have to follow a certain rhythm. So this makes it totally different. Unless you record out of the moment, no, if you do unplug, but if you really record a song with the rhythm and this is totally different here. Yeah. It has her own beauty too. You, I know that each time I make a CD or record songs, I have to uh, to tune again to 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 perf to sing in this way. But both have her uh, own beauty. But of course, life is much more free, and, and there's the response of the public. A lot of people know your music, your singing. Mm -hmm. You feel famous? No. <laughs> You know, it's maybe famous in a certain circle, but you know, it's no, it's for some people I'm nothing, you know, so it's all relative. <laughs> mm -hmm. I enjoy that more and more people are turned on and and love that that it's means there are more. Long, more and more people are longing for feeling more peace, more happiness, you know, so the more people of course come to concerts, there is, it's beautiful because it expands, there's an expansion, so mm -hmm. this for sure it's enjoyable. Paris also giving satsangs, you are doing this also together or you are also giving satsangs or how mm, to describe not. this? I don't give sets of like uh, talks or I do. But so you do the most music when on singing when Pari is giving satsang? Sometimes, yeah. Uh -huh. I, it's beautiful, it's uh, very quiet. And it's a way to tune people before satsang. Yeah. I, I believe that one can give satsangs in different ways, you know. One can give it through a song, through a touch, through a talk. Paris is very talented with talking, so I, I really like that, you know, I enjoy sad songs and I'm happy if people have interest for sad songs. So yes, I, I like attending sad, East sad song and sometimes I sing, sometimes I don't go, depends. Of, you know, I'm a mother also, so sometimes I have to attend. You have a daughter mm -hmm. and... Uh... How is being mother matches together with living a spiritual life? Is there, is there are any problems because of that, or is there no? Is this very natural for it's you? It's very natural. Yeah. Oh, you have the feeling that for your daughter it makes any difference that both of her parents are on a spiritual way, or spiritual path. <clears throat> I think it's a gift for her to show. It's, it's a, she has another foundation in life. Mm -hmm. But you know, you never know with kids what's no. going to happen. Mm -hmm. She might reject it later, have a phase of, I don't know. 
and sometimes it's for sure a bit challenging when she meets other kids who don't have the same uh, the same interest because she's also very much into it like she loves to watch movies of Ram and she draws Shiva's and I don't push her in that it's just her own thing and she seems to like that very much you know so she finds the way slowly, I think, to discriminate, you know, with whom she can share that and with whom she cannot. In the summer she meets a lot of children, of parents who are also interested in that, so in this context she probably can share more or she feels more at home. I see that when she's with um, kids from the same interest, you know, from parents who have the same interest, there is a natural relaxation that happens. This for sure, I can uh, see that. Mm -hmm. But I think it's a gift for her to to grow up in in such circumstances. You know, I don't, I never thought, oh, she's so special because she's in a spiritual. I don't entertain such thoughts. You know, we, tr we just we grow with her, she grows with us, <laughs> you know, it's like that. Show mm -hmm. no problem. Your music, um, is this, there are special spiritual elements in your music and does this support spiritual transformation? Oof. <laughs> you fall in love with this music, for sure there is a transformation happening. Like it happened for me or for others. Yeah, you fall in love with something bigger than yourself. And, uh, yeah. Uh, I think so. <laughs> um, the mantras uh, you are singing, they all have a long tradition. Or there are also new songs? Most of them are old tradition, yeah. Sometimes we make an English song mixed with mantras. This is more, maybe more new. But the mantras, yeah, they have been sang for thousands of years. But we, we put some own melodies. It's not that we have a concept we're gonna, you know, make take this mantra and put it with this music. It just happened, it's a flow. It's, uh, I might have a melody in my head and, oh, and then the words come. It's, uh, and some periods have, have more melodies coming and other period, it's more quiet. It's, it's not that I have a concept about it, you know, or a plan, let's say. And where? You are getting these mantras from? Well, sometimes we know them from having sang them in India, or, or some, there are some books also one can find about mantras. Mm -hmm. Pari knows a lot about mantras. You know, he used to sing mantras already in the 70s, so he has quite some stored <laughs> knowledge about it, you know. Sometimes you may, you play together with other musicians as well? Sure. Mm -hmm. We love to play with a violinist or flutist, percussion. And you offer concerts and Pari Satsang and you, your yoga and something else you offer for people? Uh, we do seminars, like retreats, but it's in the same context, no? It's also about singing or satsang. We do some Ayur Ayurvedic events on the beach. I used to be very much into um, Ayurveda and plants. Actually, when I came from India in the beginning, I, used, I offered some Ayurvedic treatments in the center in Greece. Mm -hmm. So I have learned a lot about I had a phase of very much exploring in this field, you know, drying herbs from Greece, 
and making peelings and all that. So we sometimes bring these elements also in our retreats. She's very enjoyable. Mm. Mm. Now you live in the winter time in Germany, in Munich. And how is this for you now? It's, let's say it's another phase of our life, you know. And there are many things enjoyable in Munich as well. Different. It's different. Of course, sometimes I miss the quietness. This coffee came so quiet and the fresh air. And I have a beautiful house there. And we did. This was very much helping all these creative times. So now we are more <laughs> in a small flat, you know. But you can also do many other things. We take our bicycles. It's very alive as well, you know. Kofu sometimes could be a little bit too quiet and Munich is the opposite, so it's okay, it's, it's a phase, it's a different phase. And Paris is giving satsang now regular every week? Mm -hmm. You also, you come then? I didn't so far because it was in the middle of the week and Mira has to go to school. So, I might do it, we simply didn't find a babysitter, yeah. we didn't really look for one, it's simply, it was just like that. It's a bit winter, you know, sometimes, <laughs> simply, it's easier to stay at home, <laughs> mm -hmm. but uh, can change any moment. Mm. And in summer, in the holiday times, you go to Greece again? You mean in summer? Or? In summer, when there's holiday, yeah. when you're daughter is when she doesn't have to go to school sure uh -huh. <laughs> great yeah. and your um, holiday center there is going on and yeah uh -huh. it's in mean, Paris leading it with the German partner Anadi mm. and they both take care you know Paris will go more often than me in between and then we're gonna be in a, two months in a stretch there so it's a test year, you know, we have to see how things develop, how we feel, how everything is possible actually at this time because we rented a furnished flat. So actually we could just pack everything and go back to Greece if we wanted to. But of course we are happy that our daughter has a bit more possibilities in school and this was the main reason actually to mm. move here. Yeah, then thank you very oh, much. Oh, thank you. I enjoyed. Me thank too. You. You're very gentle. It's very enjoyable. Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> thank you. <laughs>